So a few weeks ago, I sent out an audacious message to my friends. That was pretty easy. Sent to my family, but I even sent it to people I looked up to. And the subject line was "Trees suck, and grandchildren are boring." So my inbox filled up pretty fast. Some people responded. They said yes. Others responded. They said no way. Some people wrote in and said yes. I've been waiting for somebody to say, you know, trees aren't exactly the whole solution. Every time I think about trees, I, I hear about trees in the news, and I say, it sounds like a little bucket of water being thrown onto a huge blaze. We need something more. Somebody else wrote in and said, "No, no way. You're pitting humanity and technology and future generations against each other." So what I meant was, trees suck, but not enough, and grandchildren are boring because the climate is changing for us right now. We would need trillions of trees to remove the trillions of tons of carbon dioxide that are already in our atmosphere, and the climate is changing for us right now. People are burning the Amazon on purpose. Greenland is melting faster than scientists have ever predicted, and of the last of the hottest ten years on record, eight of them are in the last ten years. In 2019, we're on track to add more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere than any year in history. So that's why the smart people at the IPCC—they're the Climate science bigwigs. If you've heard anything about a, a climate report or a, a model that goes like this or a model that goes like that, it comes from the IPCC. And what they say is, we need to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, not just carbon neutral. We actually need to pull molecules of carbon dioxide that are already in the air. We need to pull them out. How are we supposed to do that? I got really interested in finding out how. That said, I wasn't always, you know, carbon person talking about carbon on a stage. In 2016, just a couple of years ago, I was minding my own business. I was a biohacker, biomedical engineer, helping startups in San Francisco. And one day, my friends came over. We were watching the Oscars at my house. I don't usually watch the Oscars, so I'm kind of in the kitchen cooking up dinner. I poke my head in. Beautiful people. And then I look back. There's Leonardo DiCaprio. I know him. What's he gonna say? So he gets up on stage. He's won his first Oscar. He gets up on stage and he says, "The first words out of his mouth are, 'Climate change is real.'" And I'm like, "Leo, <laughs> come on! I've heard about this since the third grade." When Mrs. Nichols sat us down, we read Time magazine for kids about the climate. I've been hearing about this. I've got it, and I think probably a lot of you out there got it too. But when I get frustrated, I get curious, and so I started looking into this stuff. And it turns out Leo is totally right. <laughs> Scientists and engineers and politicians don't have this stuff figured out. So I started really digging into it and trying to understand. Okay, so there's there's water, there's food, there's energy, there's air, there's All this stuff going off. Everything seems like it's got blinking red lights on the dashboard. How does it all connect together? So I went to a friend of mine named Mac McQuown. He's an 85-year-old financier. He's got a super sharp mind. He's got a great quote from the physicist Lord Kelvin up on his, his wall of his office, and it says, "If you can't measure it, you can't improve it." So I go to Mac and I say, "Mac, there's too much water here. There's not enough water here. It's too hot. It's too cold. How does all this stuff fit together? I'm really trying to figure it out. I want to understand what's the what's what's the root of it." So Mac looks at me and he says, "It's carbon. There's too much carbon in the air, and we're adding more carbon every single day." And so I was like, "Huh? Okay." You know, when when you hear something at first, and you're like, "Uh huh, yeah," but then you're driving. I'm driving home, and I'm thinking about it. I'm like, you know, it starts to click together. And I say, "Well, why didn't somebody say that before?" 
there's too much carbon dioxide in the air, and we've got to figure out how to take it out. And that's exactly what the, what the IPCC is talking about, is figure out how to take molecules of carbon out of the atmosphere. So I, I dug into carbon, I stopped learning about water, I stopped learning about food and energy and air, and I just paid attention to carbon, and somebody asked me, hey, have you ever heard about carbon removal? Carbon removal, huh, that sounds like a really boring medical procedure. And he said, no, 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 carbon removal is taking molecules of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And so I dug into it, and I started learning about all these scientists and engineers and entrepreneurs who were working to grab onto carbon that was in the air, they're working to store it, and they're working to make valuable things out of it. But what I noticed was they weren't really connected together. It was kind of like this guy Tito was writing all these emails to all these different people, and, and they're responding, and it's really, it's really interesting and exciting. So I created, with some friends, an online community called Air Miners. And in the last two years, Air Miners has grown to be the world's largest community of scientists, entrepreneurs, and engineers that are working to pull carbon from the atmosphere. So let's see what the Air Miners are up to. This, you might have seen this in the, in the New York Times recently, uh, this is a, a machine that's called a direct air capture machine, and what it does is it works to pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. This specific model is built by Climeworks in Switzerland, and the, the basic idea is we need to take the molecules of carbon that are in the air and filter them out. If you're thinking that it looks like a giant vacuum machine, you're, you're on the right track. The basic idea is there's only 0.04% of the air is carbon, right? It doesn't seem like 0.04%. The challenge is it adds up. That 0.04% spread throughout our entire atmosphere adds up to a trillion tons of carbon dioxide. That's a million, million tons of excess, extra carbon that's in the atmosphere. So this is one technology that's working on grabbing carbon out of the air. There's other people working on other fabrics and membranes. There's even some biological solutions that, that are in development. Okay, so we, we get our hands on carbon. Then what do we do? If you just let it back out like a butterfly, it just kind of goes back out into the atmosphere. This is a facility that's called CarbFix. And what they're doing here is they're, they're capturing carbon from the air, but then they're working to store it underground. So they're actually injecting it underground into basalt rock. And something funny happens. It doesn't just kind of bubble all out. It fuses with the rock. So the carbon dioxide that was in the air is now underground, and it's going to stay there. This is a, it really works like a one-way carbon vault. So you put carbon into the vault. It doesn't come out. If you burn the rock at 1,000 degrees centigrade, that'd be the only way to get it out, which is, that's a lot of work. So we were able to, to grab onto carbon, we were able to store it underground. We can also make valuable things out of carbon. So come check this out. So this is atmospheric carbon dioxide. This stuff used to be heating up the planet, and now it's here in this cup. You know, it sort of looks like black lentils, if you had it in your kitchen. It's safe, so we've had our, our sample sitting in the kitchen for a while. But this is actually a material additive made by a company called Carbon Upcycling Technologies up in Canada. And they're developing this as a, an additive to make plastics lighter and cheaper. They're also using carbon to make cement stronger. Other air miners are making things like fuels, vodka, and even diamonds. This is a bracelet that's made out of carbon that was captured from the atmosphere.
So you might be thinking, this guy is going to say that the air miners have solved climate change. The truth is, they haven't. This stuff is in the messy middle. This is invention and discovery. It's conversing and then arguing and then scribbling on whiteboards. It's a little bit of patenting. It's a little bit of promoting. It's scaling. And this is happening in, in garages and basements and cubicles. And it's happening out in the middle of a field where you can solder together and weld together a, a, a machine. So I want you to imagine, what if, what if the sides of our buildings, what if more of our, our, our world was made of carbon pulled from the atmosphere? What if our roads, our homes, our dishes and our kitchens, what if those were made of captured carbon? But this messy middle where there's scribbling and patenting and arguing and promoting and scaling and encouraging. This might remind you of another early stage technology. When computers were, first came about, they were big, they were slow, they were expensive, they were ugly. A lot of people looked at it and said, this is a complete waste of time. But some other people saw something more. They saw something that was worth fiddling around with in their garage, something worth soldering together and creating something new, something that was something new and possible. So what I love about this community is they flip the paradigm on the changing climate. I don't know about you, but doom isn't working for me. Doom doesn't get me out of bed in the morning. Instead of doom, we can see the changing climate as an opportunity. Instead of impossibility, we can see a challenge. Instead of emergency and panic, we can seek adventure. Climate change is an opportunity. Thank you.